Well, hello there. Welcome to the lesson on the Pythagorean Theorem. And before we get started today, that's kind of a funny word, Pythagorean and Theorem. Those are funny words right there. So let's talk about what that actually is. Well, Pythagorean is a Greek word, but it's, it's a Greek word named after this guy right here. His name was Pythagoras. And Pythagoras was a Greek philosopher and mathematician that lived between uh, 570 BC and 495 BC. So he lived about, what, 2,500 years ago? And he's kind of a famous Greek guy because he has this very famous theorem named after him. Well, what's a theorem? A theorem in mathematics is a very important rule, like really important rule, that can be proven or verified. So this theorem right here is a really important rule. We have lots of theorems in mathematics, but this is probably the most famous theorem known as the Pythagorean theorem. It's just such an important, enduring um, part of mathematics. So um, I want to kind of show you what the Pythagorean theorem is and how we use it. So let's get started. Okay. Take a minute and pause this video and go ahead and copy down this picture. So write parts of a right triangle on top, and then I want you to make a right triangle, and I know this is a right triangle because I have this square in the corner right here. Whenever you have a square in a certain corner of a triangle, it is a symbol that says it's a right triangle, or it's a 90 degree angle right here. And then, I want you to, if you have a highlighter, I want you to highlight the longest side that is across from the right angle. Notice this right angle. It's almost like an arrow that's pointing to the longest side. That is the hypotenuse. That sounds like a funny word. But it's, remember, it's an ancient Greek word. These Greek words have come, been around for a very long time. So it's, they sound funny, but it's hypotenuse. And oftentimes, we like to use the letter C to describe the hypotenuse. And then, the two blue sides that make up the right angle, we call them legs. Now, if you call this leg A, then this leg here would have to be B. If you call this leg B, then this leg would have to be A. So you can interchange the A and B on the legs, but the hypotenuse is always the longest side and it usually is C. And make sure, I think I'm going to write that down. The hypotenuse is always the longest side, because that's important to know. Hypotenuses are always the longest side of a right triangle. And, that doesn't, and that's on all right triangles. And you can always find the hypotenuse, because you can kind of see that this right arrow right here is kind of pointing to this yellow side, the hypotenuse. OK, so go ahead and write that down. OK, so, so what does the Pythagorean theorem say? Well, it's a famous statement. You probably may have heard this before, that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And remember what squared means. It means the second power. It means a times a plus b times b equals c times c. So let's look at a right triangle where I've put in the C for the hypotenuse. Remember, the C is always the longest side. And I have just A and B on the two legs. And see, let's see what a picture of that actually looks like. So go ahead and copy down this uh, right triangle really quick. And one thing I want you to do is I want you to leave a lot of space around the outside of it, because we're going to be drawing a picture. And I'm going to need a lot of space all around this right triangle. So go ahead and do that, and then, uh, then we'll, I'll show you the picture you're going to be drawing. OK, so what does it mean to square something? Well, when you square something, you actually are making a square. So a squared is just when you make a square out of side a. So all of these sides are a. So this right here, this area in here, can be described as a squared. This entire, let me do it in green here, this entire green sh area right here, this is a squared. 
Okay, so when you're talking about area, you're talking about area you're t a squared, you're talking about the entire area of the square. Likewise, when you're talking about b squared, so there's b squared, you're talking about the area of the square b squared. So we can look at this, something like this. So we're looking at this area right here. And I'll go ahead and fill those in. So the blue area, that entire area is b squared. And now I've kind of filled in this c squared area, and so the purple area is c squared. So when we're talking about the Pythagorean theorem, what we're saying is if you add all this green area up and you add the blue area up, it's going to equal the purple area. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So that's kind of a picture of what's happening with the Pythagorean theorem. So let's say we have an example. Let's call this example number one. So I'll say E number So we call this example number one. Sorry about that. And so we have this side right here. We'll, this A, we'll say this is our A side. That's three units. Could be inches, could be centimeters. Doesn't matter the units. Could be miles, could be millimeters. It can be any unit. And let's say that this is four inches. And let's say this is five inches. So we keep the same unit. So let's say this is three inches and four inches and five inch, inches. So let's see how the Pythagorean theorem works. Well. If A is 3, what is A squared? What's the area of this green square? Well, it's just 3 times 3, right? So that is 9. And if B is 4, what is the area of B squared? Well, that's just 4 times 4, so that's 16. And if this is 5, C what is the area of c squared? Well, yeah, you guessed it. It's 25. So remember what the Pythagorean theorem says. It says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So let's see how that works. Well, what's a? In this case, a is 3, so a squared is 9. So we know that 9 plus what's c squared, or b, this is b squared. Uh, what's b squared? Well, b is 4, so b squared is 16. Equals, what's c? c is 5, so what's c squared? 25. So if you add up 9 plus 16, what do you think you get? You get 25. So they're both equal to 25. Remember, on the left side over here, this stands for a squared plus b squared. And on the right side over here, that stands for c squared. And on a right triangle, a squared plus b squared always equals c squared. And that's actually very, very, very helpful. And I'll show you why in the next example. Now. Why is the Pythagorean theorem important? Why are we spending an entire lesson on it? Why am I showing you pictures of this, this old guy who lived 2,500 years ago? So why it's, it's very important to know why we are still studying the Pythagorean theorem. And the main reason, I would say, the number one reason that we study the Pythagorean theorem and, just, and uh, put such value on it is because we can find missing sides of right triangles. And that's usually what we do with the Pythagorean theorem. We find missing sides of right triangles. So let's do a couple more examples where we actually are missing a side of right triangle and we have to use the Pythagorean theorem to find it. It's going to be a lot of fun.
Okay, so let's say we have an example, this is example number three, that we have this right triangle, and sorry, I went off the screen a little bit, my square, just, just use your imagination, think this square keeps going on off my screen. And let's say I have a right triangle, and I know it's a right triangle because the right angle is here. Notice it kind of is in a different position now. So that means that this is C right here because it's opposite the right angle. And so let's say I have a right triangle that has a 5, a 12, and I want to know how long C is. Well, let's go ahead and figure that out. Now, the first thing we need to do is if 5 is the A side, remember we can make the two shorter sides, the legs, either A or B, it doesn't matter. So let's say I say that this is A, so what's A squared? Well, yeah, 5 times 5 is 25. All right, and then what's B squared? What's B squared? Well, 12 times 12 is 144. So remember what the Pythagorean theorem says. It says A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now, my goal here, though, before I continue any further, I want to know what C is. I want to know how long C is. Okay, that's my goal. But I'm going to use A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So right now what I want you to do is I want you to take A squared, which is 25, and I want you to add it to B squared, which is 144, and tell me what you get. Well, I believe what we get is we get 169. 169. So C squared equals 169. Now, here's the deal. We don't want to find C squared. We want to find C. So remember in our last lesson, our, our 6.1 lesson, how did we go from something squared, an area, to a side length? How did we get rid of a perfect square and just get the side length? Well, we did something called a square root. And you have a square root chart in your notes that we made on the last lesson. And so what is the square root of 169? Well, yeah, that's just 13. So we've just figured out that C equals 13. And we're done. Well, in example four, go ahead and copy this down. What I'm going to do in example four is to try to do the Pythagorean theorem with just using the formula and not having to draw the picture. The picture is good to give you a visual of kind of what's going on, but after you know what's going on, sometimes it's a lot of work to draw the picture, to make the squares and all that. So let's just see if we can use the actual formula itself and use that to help us solve it. Well, what does the Pythagorean theorem say? It says a squared plus b squared equals c squared equals c squared. So let's go ahead and plug some numbers in. Now, the first thing you have to do is you can see c. We don't know what c is, but Let's say that 8, we'll just make 8 the A, and we'll make 6 the B. And it doesn't matter. You could switch the A and the B there. That's not a big deal. So this could be a B, and that could be an A. So if A is 8, what is A squared? Well, that's just 8 times 8. So that is 64. Plus, if b is 6, what is b squared? Well, that's just 6 times 6. And what is 6 times 6? Well, yeah, that's just 36. 6 times 6 is 36. And we don't know what c squared is. We don't know what c squared is. So that we're just going to copy down c squared. Now. We're going to add these two areas up. We're going to add these two areas up. So I want to know what, what is 64 plus 36. Well, if you add those up, I believe we get 100. And that equals C 
squared. Now, we don't need c squared. Remember what we want. We want c. So how do you go from c squared to c? Well, yeah, you just take the square root. When you take the square root, it cancels out the squared and just makes it normal. And what is the square root of 100? Well, that's easy. We can do that without our chart. But if you, if you can't remember, look at your chart. That is 10. So we now know that c is 10. And we're done. And so c would equal 10. All right, so let's go ahead and try one more example. All right, so let's see what it looks like. OK, so for example five, notice I have a right triangle. And what sides have I given you here? Well, I've given you the hypotenuse, which is 25. And I know the hypotenuse, yeah, 25 is a hypotenuse, because it lies opposite the right angle. The hypotenuse always lies opposite the right angle. Now, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a C right there for, I'm going to put a C right there for 25. Now, I'm, this is a B right here, so that means that this has to be an A. This 7 right here has to be an A. That 7 right there has to be an A. So we have C here, and we have A here. OK? So remember what we have. We have A squared. The Pythagorean theorem says A squared, A squared, So now I have 7 squared plus b squared equals 25 squared. And so let's go ahead and do the math. Well, 7 squared is 49 plus b squared equals 25 squared. Well, what's 25 squared? 25 times 25 in our chart was 625. So let's review how we got that. So A was 7, so 7 squared is 49. B, we don't know, so we just have B squared. And C was 25. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. All right, now, I don't know. I, normally, I'm, I know, normally, what I don't know is the hypotenuse. But now I actually do know the hypotenuse. I'm trying to find one of the legs. So here, I'm not going to add these two things together because I don't know what b is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get b squared all by itself by just subtracting 49 from both sides. OK? So I get 49. I subtract 49 from both sides. So I get b squared is equal to, now go ahead and do the math right now. What is 625 minus 49? Well, 625 minus 49 is 576. But we're not done yet, because that's b squared. b squared equals 576. We want b. So how do we get rid of b squared? We take the square root. We take the square root. When we square root, we get b equals, what's the square root of 576? Well, yeah, in your chart, you'll see that that's 24. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we know that b is equal to 24. So this triangle right here, this right triangle, is a 7, 24, 25, right triangle. Let's do one more example. All right, so for number six, let's do one where we have some decimals. Because we talked about decimals in our 6.1 square roots unit, um, lesson on square roots. So we did deal with some, some decimals with that. So hopefully at this point, you can kind of see um, where this is going to go. 
Well, again, we have a right triangle, so remember, we always want to start out with a Pythagorean theorem. So we have a squared plus b squared. a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to plug the numbers in. Well, I don't know what a is, so I'm just going to say that's a squared plus b is 5.6. So I'm going to say 5.6, and then I'm going to square that number, because that's b is 5.6, b squared equals c squared. Well, let's see. c is 10.6, and now I'm going to square that. All right, so let's figure out how to do that. Well, the first thing I need to do is I need to square 5.6, and I need to square 10.6. Now, off to the side, those aren't going to be in your chart, so we actually have to do the math. So what is 5.6 squared? That is 5.6 times itself, 5.6. Let's see if we can do this together. 6 times 6 is 36. Carry the 3. 5 times 3 is 30. Add 3 more gives me 33. Move this down a little bit, give myself a little more room. Put a 0 to hold the place. I'll scratch this 3 out. 5 times 6 is 30. Carry the 3. 5 times 5 is 25. 26, 27, 28. So that's going to be 28. And now I add it up. 6 plus 0 is 6. 3 plus 0 is 3. 8 plus 3 is 11. 2 plus 1 is 3. Now, how many decimals do I need to move? 1, 2. So I need to move the decimal 1, 2 places. So I know that 5.6 times 5.6 equals 31.36. Now, Go ahead and do this same kind of multiplication on your paper right now and see if you can't figure out what 10.6 times 10.6 is. So I want you to pause the video right now and I want you to figure out what 10.6 times 10.6 is. So go ahead and do that right now. So when you take 10.6 and do 10.6, you should get 112.36. So this is going to be 112.36. That's going to be my 10.6 squared. OK, now, remember what we want to do. We know what c is, so we don't want to add. We can't add a squared in 31.6. So we have to subtract a 31.36 from both sides. We're going to solve this equation for a squared. So we're going to subtract on both sides of the equation 31.36. And remember, when you take a number and subtract itself, they cancel out. That's the whole point. So now we just bring this a squared down. So we have a squared a squared, that's an A, A squared, sorry, A squared is equal to, now, what is 112 minus 31.36? Well, let's see if we can just do the math together. 6 minus 6 is 0. 3 minus 3 is 0. Bring your decimal down. 2 minus 1 is 0. 1. What is 11 minus 3? Well, 11 minus 3 
is 8. Okay, 11 minus 3 is 8. So now we get d squared, or excuse me, a squared equals 81.0, or just 81. Now, what is the square root of a squared? The square root of a squared is a, and the square root of 81 is 9. So now we know that a equals 9, because the square root of 81 equals 9. And we're done. Our answer is a equals 9, using a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, so now you are done with the lesson today. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, I will catch you up when I see you in your next class. All right, make sure next week you can go to WebEx when we get back to school next week. And um, you can also get help from me during seventh period. Just come to my WebEx page and we can do some work together. So what you need to do now is go into your homework bucket and go ahead and do 6.2. So in your homework bucket, here's the things that I need you to have done. And I'm going to be checking this when I get back next week. So your homework bucket, let's write this out. Your homework bucket. In your homework bucket, these are the three things that you need to have done. You need to have Schoology assignment 6. Point, oh, excuse me. Before 6.1, we did fair game review. So make sure you have your fair game review. Fair game review. That's the first assignment we did. That's the one that deals with order of operations. So we want to do this fair game review. The next thing you want is 6.1. 6.1 is the square roots and all the things we did with square roots. And the next thing we did is today's lesson, which is 6.2, which is the Pythagorean theorem. All right. So that's what you need to have accomplished by the time we meet again next week. These three assignments, and I will put them into queue um, next week. All right, I already have fair game review in, and um, I'll put these in next week. All right, so have a wonderful day, guys. Have a wonderful weekend. Um, make sure you're uh, getting your homework done, and if you have any questions, we can talk next week. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.